Hey guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal, and I am back. I'm going to need to start getting thumbnails for my videos, so I can upload with thumbnails. But, this is going to be what if Fem Deku was Ichigo Kurosaki. If you don't know who Kur Ichigo Kurosaki is, watch Bleach, and he's the main character. So... <laughs> I just basically re-listened to most of the fights that Ichigo went through. Just listened. I didn't watch because I don't need to re-watch. I've memorized how the fights go. And my favorite lines are from the Ichigo versus the hollow Ichigo, or the white Ichigo. And if you guys have not seen Bleach, there's going to be a little bit of a few spoilers. The uh, manga... Uh, and I think it's out for Japan, but I don't know. Don't quote me on anything. I think it's out for Japan, the anime, at some points. And I'm going to bring in some canon logic into this from, from, uh, from Bleach. So if you guys don't know anything about Bleach, I don't suggest you... Uh, watch this for very long and if you guys are interested in watching bleach i suggest you go finish that before you watch this so you can get some idea of what goes on at points so in this canon everybody's quirks activate at 10 years old mutations still are mutations and they show up with physical uh, features on the person since birth but Quirks activate at 10 years old. And I'm kind of torn on the name. Either I could just say Ichigo or Deku. I don't really know. But I'm going to have to think about that. Be right back. So. Everybody unlocks their quirk at the age of 10. And by the time they turn 10, their body has had a chance to form into the right other shape. Because some people have uh, grown mutations during the 10-year span that they've been alive. And or condition. So, Bakugo is a female in this one. She is best friends with uh, Ichigo. Yeah, I'm just going to say Ichigo. She's best friends with Ichigo. And Ichigo kind of leveled Bakugo out a little. So Bakugo was getting cocky and Ichigo just was like, no, don't. I'll put you on your ass if you stake that cocky. And she's like, fine, 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 Jesus. So, Baku is not very cocky. Ichigo is still stupidly strong. Like he was in the anime. He's a little stronger than a normal person. So, she's a little stronger than normal people. Even people with strength quirk, she's just a tiny bit stronger than. So. <laughs> we go to. When she's walking out of school one day. When she's 10. And Buck runs up to her saying how cool her quirk is. And Ichigo's like, yeah, um, nah. And <laughs> Buck goes like, what do you mean? I got my quirk before you. Just true, true, true. But... You still didn't beat me in a fight yet. And Bakugo's like, damn it. So she's like, fine. Let's fight. Right now. And she goes, nah. Too much of a hassle. And she's currently walking Tori. Towards a flower shop. 
And she always goes to the same flower shop every single day. And yes, she does have a father who does run a hospital. So, yeah. So she walks over to this flower shop and she walks in and the owner of the flower shop who knows Ichigo really well and Bakugo. But Ichigo is normally the one who gets the flowers. Hands Ichigo the flowers and Bakugo says I would like to give some as today and he goes okay. And he hands some to Bakugo and says you can pay me tomorrow. And Ichigo goes thank you. And they all and they both walk to the cemetery. And this is not a very big cemetery. This is a cemetery that's been just thrown trash in. No one's taken care of it. So Ichigo, seeing this, starts to go to there every single day until it's clean. And she keeps it clean. And she's been <sighs> installing a fence around the cemetery by herself. So no one can get in without supervision and some heroes see this and it's like cool cool um yeah sure and then they just not pay attention to it then some are like cool we need to start getting uh, things together to help so today Ichigo is getting, gets to the cemetery and, and places down the flowers for each stone, gravestone, because she does this once a week. And she does a little prayer, because no matter what religion you are, you say something to the dead. I don't care if you're atheist. I don't care if you're... Uh, you don't believe in spirits. Just, you say something to the dead. Even if you think, oh, they're not going to hear me, just say something. It's like you're talking to someone in real life. Or in this plane of existence. Where they may, they may not. I've never gotten an answer. So I can't tell you if they're, they're real. So if they hear you, great. If they don't, oh well. On Bakugo, she lost her mother when she was little. Yes, Mitsuki's dead. And she lost her father when she... Well, she's never known her father. But she lost her mother when she's little. So, Bakugo lives with Ichigo. And Ichigo only lives with her father. And instead of two sisters, she's got two brothers. So, <laughs> she gets home and goes, hey, I'm home. And walks upstairs. And Bakugo follows her because they literally live in the same room. And Baku's like, so when are you going to fight me? And she goes, uh, never. There's no reason for me to fight you. And Baku's like, come on, I want to fight. She goes, no. No, I'm just going to whoop your ass again. And she goes, you could try. And she goes, okay, first off, I treat you like family. So no. Second off. I don't even have my quirk yet. And she goes. Whatever. Just fight me already. And she goes. No. And. Her father. Is. Preparing dinner. And calls them. All down. And her brothers are the. Uh, real 
take care of the household for people. Because, well, Ichi, Ichigo just doesn't care. She wants to be a hero. She doesn't want to stay at home and slave away. And no, I'm not bringing the soul society into this. So she's going to be really overpowered. So we go to a few days later when Ichio's walking home and someone attacks her. And this person has a sword. And this person stabs her right in the chest. And she grabs the handle of the sword and the sword just disappears. Disintegrates. Like if Shigaraki grabs the sword. And... The guy's like, what the hell just happened? And he's looking at his hands because nothing's happening to his hands because he thought he was going to start disintegrating like his sword. And Bakugo isn't there, so she's just freaking out on, her, on herself. And she, on instinct, this is all instinct, she grabs behind herself and pulls out a giant katana. The Sampakto that Ichigo had when she first got her sampa or just first got his sampakto not this one yet that that sound gets you and she pulls it out of thin air and slices and she doesn't want to kill him she just wants to hurt hurt him enough to make him uh, immobile so it goes right through him and there's a giant cut across his chest where the sword passed through him. And all the nerves were cut in the right spot so he's not dead. He's just immobile. So if she had killer in uh, intent with the blades or her blade, he would have died easily. So she gets home and she's freaking out like what the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? And her and her father sees this and goes, Well, looks like you got your quirk. And he summons his sword and goes, See? And she's still freaking out. And he goes, Don't worry, don't worry, I'll teach you everything. So we skip a year and she's learned how to bring out Zangetsu. But she doesn't know that she's also has hidden powers from her mother's side. Yes, her mother is her mother was a Quincy Fullbringer that was possessed by a hollow. Yes, it, it's still like that. Or how did he become a Fullbringer? I forgot. But yes, her mother was still a Quincy that got possessed by a hollow. Kind of. So she learns how to summon Zan, uh, Zangetsu, so at any point in time, she can summon Zangetsu. She does not leave her body, though. So fatal wounds in uh, Soul, Reaper, Soul Reaper form are fatal to him, but fatal wounds in normal form are also fatal to him. So I just mashed those forms together, so she's just a little stronger in this form. She hasn't learned Getsu Getsuka Tensho yet. She's just brought out Zangetsu. So we skip to when she's just turned 12 and she walks to the graves and she puts the flowers on the graves like normal. But this day, all the heroes have gotten together because they were told that a special person is going to come by this uh, grave site and put flowers on this grave. And the ones that wanted to put a fence up for her heard from a very special person that this girl is turning a certain age. So they put up the fence in a rush job. So the fence isn't perfect, but it 
will do for now. So they can get a professional crew out there. And she's walking and she was about to walk into the fence. When someone says, well, don't you dare hey, hit that because that's still sitting in. And she goes, hit what? And looks up and sees the fence. And she's like, oh my god. And she looks at who did this and saw that it was the pro hero eraser head. And she goes, oh my god, it's eraser head. And she starts geeking out like normal canon Deku. Because you gotta have some of the sin and roll there. She starts geeking out like him and she puts it together that the heroes did this to the graveyard. And they also quarantined off a another section of the graveyard or of the open field and said that they're currently doing construction. This will be done in a few days. And she asks if these could be put on the graves and they go, yes, you may go in and put those on the grave, but you must come back out. And she goes, I will. So she puts them on the grave, says her prayer that she normally says, and walks out. And she says thank you to the heroes for letting her do that. And they say, hey, no problem. And they usher her away so they can continue building the fence and making sure that the workers aren't interrupted. And she's been training with her father to unlock her quirk. And her father has such a strong quirk that he can literally cut a hole in time. Because there are quirks that can manipulate time. So he can cut a hole in time and make a dimension out of it. So he has her train in there that... And in this, you age just like in the real world. The same rate, but... You experience it much slower. So, a million years in the time rift bubble thingy that I gave to him. So, yes, this is going to be like Don Guy. Is one year in real life. And so, it's going to be a very big... Uh, difference so <laughs> she gets trained for a whole month in there because she's off of school and every few minutes she has to or every few who uh days she gets hungry because her body does age slower and her body uses less energy in this space but she still has the same Basically, work ethic. And she is huh, taught the Getsuka Tensho and the final Getsuka Tensho. And when she activates Getsuka Tensho, for the first time, it's too powerful for her father to contain. So she, he runs in front of it, and her not wanting to kill anybody, he just gets a cut on his shoulder, because he still has more soul power than she does so she's like oh my god oh my god and he goes it's fine I only got a slight cut and he shows her the very slim and uh, not very deep cut that she gave him and, and she goes what the hell was that and he goes that was your ability a very good ability too and he said is one more thing if you ever ever use that on a human and he said human and she goes what do you mean human he goes oh sorry sorry if you ever use that on a mortal you must think of not killing them and she goes yeah 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 uh what you, what did you mean by human and he goes that comes later let's go home and it's been a month so she goes back and her it's been a month in real time, so she comes in every once in a while, eats, and leaves, and it's gone for a few hours. She basically sleeps in there, trains in there, bathes in this time rift. So, <sighs> she learned gets potential, and the final gets potential. So we go to, 
Um, hmm. Yeah, I think that. We go to one day she's meditating. And she was t- tasked to meditate once a day until she gets in contact with somebody. And she finally sees it. She finally sees the city that she lives in sideways. And she doesn't know the name of her sword yet. She doesn't know that. She just knows that she has gets potential and the shape of her sword. She doesn't know the name, which will increase the power of her sword drastically. And she sees him, Zangetsu, and she asks who he, who he is. And he goes, my name is this. And he says it. She sees his mouth say it, but she can't hear it. And she goes, what? And he goes, you are not ready yet. And that's when the white version of her shows up. And goes, you're not ready for either of us. (laughs) And he just comes up and bashes her head off her shoulders. And she gets flung out of meditation. And she's now breathing hard. She's breathing really hard because she just got scared because she felt like she was dying literally and figuratively and so she's like what the hell was that and her father runs in because he heard her scream because she did scream unintentionally he runs in and asks what happened and she goes I saw two figures and he goes two um uh, okay, uh, what were their names? And she goes, I don't know. I couldn't hear them. And he goes, okay, so I need you to meditate more. And so every day for a good three hours, she's in the time rift. Three hours in real time, but she's in the time rift. And she's meditating. Trying to call upon the name of her sword. I know I did the sword out of order, but yeah. I did the sword. And the mask starts to form. And her father sees this and goes, oh, crap. She also took after her mother. So he's freaking out like, what do I do? I don't want to kill her. Because her mother went psycho and the heroes had to put her down. After she gave birth. So, I don't know which, I think the youngest is the shortest one. So after she gave birth to the youngest son, or youngest daughter in canon. No, when she was six, she was attacked by a hollow. Yeah. But in this one, once she gave birth to her youngest son, her quirk took over because it was always fighting for dominance in her. Sentient quirks. Duh. And it finally took over, and it went on a rampage. And the heroes had to put her down. So. We go back to the time rift that she's currently in. And the hollow mask starts to form. In the mindscape of Ichigo. She is currently talking with Zangetsu and her white version the white version of her Mm. hiccups I hate them and she's talking with them and Ichigo the white version of Ichigo says well you'll be ready for a for at least our name when you beat me in a fight and Zangetsu turns into the sword and goes You'll hear my name during this fight. And she goes, okay. So she starts fighting with uh, the white Ichigo. And he asks her a question. And if you guys have seen Bleach and know exactly what fight I'm talking about, you'll know exactly what 
question I'm about to ask. And they're fighting, they're clashing blades, and he asks, or she asks herself a question, because they look exactly the same. What is the difference between the king and the horse? And I'm going to leave that question open-ended, because you guys have to figure that out. And don't go searching it up. I know most of you probably are. You guys got to go watch Bleach to find out the answer. Or if you already know the answer, tell me on Discord in the answer column. I'm going to see if I can put a Discord link in the description. Oh, sorry. I'm not going to see. I'm going to put the Discord link in the description. So hopefully you guys join. And yes, I'm getting the uh, stream together for tomorrow. We'll hopefully be able to stream it. My computer's not the best because it is just a laptop. And it's not meant for streaming. I, I do want my, myself a, a full-on computer rig to stream. But I don't have enough money for that yet. So if you start seeing ads on my videos, that's probably because I put ads on my videos to get paid so I can continue doing this for you guys. So we go back to um, hmm. They're fighting, and Ichigo is thinking about this. And the white Ichigo is fighting as hard as she is, but the white Ichigo doesn't get tired. So, Ichigo is starting to tire out, and he's getting ready to fight the hollowed version of her. And she finally hears the name of her sword, because the sword broke. The sword broke, and she's like, "Ah, crap. My friend, I've lost you. And... <laughs> He's like, I'm not just your friend. I am you, Zangetsu. And she heard that, and she called out Zangetsu, and she got a new sword. And she gets an increased size of her Zangetsu, and why did she go is not expecting that? But right after she pulls out the increased size from her own chest, because, yes, it was hiding in her own chest, in this mental world, why did Ichigo pulls out the same sword? But this time the sword doesn't break, and they continue fighting. And the hollow mask fully takes over, and her father's in a fighting stance, ready to fight. And Baku was told that if... Ichigo has a white and red mask on when she comes out of the rift, you gotta fight her and calm her down. Because if you don't, she's gonna be killed just like their mother. And she was told about the mother situation after this, and Ichigo doesn't know yet. She just thinks that her mother died because of her. And the hollow form knows, because the hollow is smarter than normal Ichigo. So he pulls up this to distract her in the fight. And Ichigo, being smarter in this one, finally answers the hollow's question. And says the answer. And the hollow goes, very good. Well too late and she goes no it's not and she takes a stab right to the gut and she grabs the hilt of the sword because it was a reverse uh zangetsu it was mainly white with a black trim and a um black uh bandage around the handle and it starts turning into normal zangetsu and the white ichigo is freaking out like what's going on what's going on and she hugs the white Ichigo, because 
Why not? Hug the hug it out. And why didn't you go? Stop struggling. And the mask falls off. But it doesn't de dematerialize like it should. And <laughs> and she comes out of her meditation and goes like, oh, I know what the name of my sword is now. And he goes, uh, okay, um, do you know both names? And she goes, no. Um, and he goes, okay, well, um, let's go home. And he pulls her into the, out of the rift, and Baku is slightly ready, but also not ready to fight her. So... Baku sees that they both came out of the rift, and the mask is currently on her hip, and asks, now? And he goes, nope. And Ichigo asks, what do you mean now? And he goes, nothing. There, there's no need to worry. And she goes, were you going to put Bakugo against me? You know I can whoop her butt, right? And he goes, yeah, but also Bakugo has the best chance of calming you down. And she goes, True. If I go on a rampage. And. <laughs> he goes yeah. Uh, anything else? And she goes. Yeah. Um, I feel like if I'm about to die. The horse will take control. And he hears that and goes. Oh crap. And he goes. Well. Time for you to learn sword fighting. So the next three years she learns sword, fi sword fighting. And she learns it so well that she can do it blindfolded. Like the blind swordsman. Because she was taught by a blind swordsman. Yes, I'm doing that. So. <laughs> uh, we go to... The first year of UA, or the entrance exams of UA. And it's not the normal entrance exams for her. She's told that she has to go to a specific training ground and fight a specific person. And she's, she sees who it is and goes, oh, crap. And he goes, oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not the person who's fighting you. And he, he points to someone who walks over and says, I'll be in your mind. And Ichigo goes, goes, what? And she, the swordsman goes, yes, you must meditate. And she goes, okay. And she starts meditating. And she goes into her own mindscape. And she sees the person that was right next to her. And he goes, okay, so you're going to be watching this fight? And she goes, yeah. And Ichigo looks at the white version of her and goes, and the white version goes, ow, oh, you got a spectator. Great. And she goes, don't worry, don't worry. I'll leave once the fight is over. And you can go on a rampage if you win. And the white version of her goes, Yeah! Because the white version is the one that loves fighting. And this hollow version of Ichigo shows the hole in the middle of her chest. And this hollow version asks Ichigo, why does she fight? And Ichigo says to protect people. And the hollow attacks her. He goes, wrong. And Ichigo goes, what do you mean? And she goes, I'm the complete opposite of you. You don't fight for, to protect people. I fight to protect people. I go on rampages to kill people so that people won't get hurt. And Ichigo goes, what? Well, he goes, yeah, you've been, or she goes, yeah, you've been lying to yourself. And the entire time, the person is writing down notes. It's all mental notes, literally, because they're, they're just mentally going into her mind. And she can remember them perfectly when she takes down notes in someone else's mind. So she writes down all the notes. 
And an hour later, in real world, Ichigoka gets out of the mindscape. And Ichigo's like, damn. Well, and she looks at Zangetsu and drops it. And it just shatters. Because, damn, um, I need to go to a forge. And they go, what? And she goes, yeah. Um, it's either I forge something, or I just get a new one, and it shatters every time I use it. So, and they go, we, we'll arrange that. Um, and they know exactly what's going to happen, because of someone special that's done the exact same thing for his full powers. So, they get ready, and they get it ready, and this... They say it's going to take at least half a year of UA. And she goes, fine. That, that's fine with me. And she's worn the same bracelet. It's not just any kind of bracelet. It's a, just a normal bracelet. But not like any other bracelet. Same time. Because she's worn it. Day, night, camping trips, non-camping trips, and she's worn it forever. And she doesn't know when she hasn't worn it. And every time that she brings out Zangetsu, it shifts into a gauntlet on her left hand. And she doesn't know why. That was after two years of training with her father. It started to shift. Now, she's told to go to UA like normal. And now she can summon a temporary version of Zangetsu and still use her Bankai, which her Bankai is a permanent version. Bankai. So the temporary version of Zangetsu is the second form of Zangetsu that you see in the anime. I think. I don't I don't really know if you see it in the anime. I don't know. Oh, you do actually see it in the anime. He picks it up when trying to get his Bonkai for the for season one. Or is it season two? It's one of the seasons. It's one of those seasons. So she gets that version and she fights well with it. It's the first day of UA, and Aizawa goes, okay, everybody out. We're doing a test. Bakugo did the entrance exam. He got top marks. And Bakugo basically clings now to Ichigo. Because why wouldn't she? Best friends. Sometimes more than friends. But... Bakugo has been around Ichigo so long that Ichigo's quirk, being a soul-style uh, quirk, has given Bakugo a certain ability. Bakugo has basically become a full bringer. Yes, Bakugo has become a full bringer. Because soul abilities are able to transfer, unlike other quirks, which aren't. Yes, I'm making all for one and one for all a quirk, a soul quirks. That instead of having to choose a successor, a successor is automatically chosen for them. They just have to find it. So, Bakugo can make extra big explosions, and every time that she starts using her quirk, her necklace that was given to her by Ichigo. Uh, hi, Leo. Hi, buddy. My cat just joined me. You want to be in this recording? Are you already in this recording? <laughs> Come on.
Come on. So, Ichigo is brought up second because Bakugou got top marks. And Bakugou's like, whoa, 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 why is she second? She's supposed to be first. And Aizawa goes, well, yes. And he just ignores the question. So, there. <laughs> Uh, and talking and discussing some stuff while she walks up to the state, uh, plate or circle, whatever you want to call it. She walks up to the circle and everybody else is like, what, what are you doing? And she pulls out the sword and they're all freaking out like, what is she going to do? What is she going to do? And <laughs> she pulls out the sword and she gets <laughs> a massive gets good show ready, and she, she just tosses up the ball, and right when it's in front of her, she goes gets good show, and launches the ball into outer space. So, Ari's like, "What the hell is happening?" And everybody saw this and was like, what is going on? And Baka's like, damn, you gotten a lot stronger than the last time I saw you use your quirk. And she goes, well, yeah. Makes sense that you've only seen the sword. And she goes, I haven't seen that sword in forever. And she goes, well, you haven't seen this sword in a long time, because this isn't my sword. Zangetsu broke. And she goes, what do you mean Zangetsu broke? And <laughs> Ichigo goes, well, Zangetsu is not his true form. Yet. And she goes, uh, that makes no sense. And she goes, well, I need to forge a true form. I need to forge his true form. And when I forge his true form, it'll be made purely out of my quirk. And she goes, what do you mean, your quirk? And she goes, well... And she draws the sword and goes, this is able to be forged into different shapes for, for me. And just one strike of the hammer can change its shape completely. But... The only way to get it hot is with my quirk and apparently this thing called soul pressure. I don't understand it. And everybody's like, what are they talking about? So we go to after school and Bakugo and Ichigo are walking home. And this masked man jumps out at them and Ichigo on instinct, grabs for Zangetsu and tries to attack the masked man. What the hell are they doing out there? Oh. I'm being attacked by very many, uh, too many noises. I have ADHD, so I kind of don't focus well. So, Zangetsu breaks on the man's mask. This isn't any normal mask. This is a very massive mask compared to what they normally do for masks. For, ma 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 for masks. It's a very massive mask. And everybody's like, who the hell is that? Because they're currently still on UA grounds. They were trying to leave, but they're currently still on UA grounds. And this guy is 
attacking them. And he's like, I'll take another one of you down. And she's, they're like, what? Um, excuse me? And he goes, I drove your mother insane. I'll drive you insane and take you down too. And Ichigo loses it. Because she finally remembers what exactly happened to her mother. She blo kind of blocked out the memories. She finally remembers that her mother didn't die of childbirth. She went. She didn't go crazy of childbirth. No. Someone used her, their quirk on her and she tried to kill her own children. So, yeah. Um, I'm making it that dark. So Ichigo goes crazy and she pulls out Zangetsu and sees that it's shattered and she goes, I don't care. And she holds it up and goes, Bunkai. And all of a sudden, everybody felt this pressure around them, which made them want to run. And before the man could actually run, the mask gets sliced in half. And this deep cut was left out on the man's face. And then he got a few thousand cuts on his body. She really wanted to hurt him. and Nothing happened with the hollow form. The hollow form was like, ooh, I'm going to leave you alone. And the mask didn't form on her face. So, yeah. Um, this is going to be crazy, but I'm about to add Biakia. So, we go to one of the heroes that was close to UA. Yes, Biakia is a hero. And Byakuya saw the entire encounter. And he has a soul quirk. Soul manipulation quirk. Which he can summon a sword do. It's the Senbon Sakura. So he activated his Bankai. Yes, I'm adding multiple people, but I'm not adding the soul society. They're going to be heroes. He activates his Bankai, which is all those swords, if you've seen the anime. And they start fighting. Full strength. Without limits. And everybody feels this massive pressure. And they're like, yeah, we gotta run. The only one who doesn't uh, run on instinct is Bakugo. And we go to after the fight. Because Byakuya is currently exhausted from the fight. And so is Ichigo. Ichigo's passed out on the ground, all hurt, and Byakuya is currently crouched on the ground, being like, damn, that was a hard fight. In Ichigo's mind, this is happening. Yeah. She's getting this early. So, the vassal lord that was currently possessing Ichigo in the anime took over when she fought the uh, one dude who killed him. Or when he fought the one dude who killed him. Yes, there's going to be a lot of spoilers. Like I said in the beginning. And he went into vassal lord mode and completely and utterly annihilated him. So, I'm going to bring that up. All of a sudden, you see two bones start poking out of Ichigo's head. And Bakugo was told that if she ever saw bones on, or what looked like bones coming out of Ichigo's head, calm her down immediately. And she goes, oh, crap. 
And Byakuya, seeing this, goes, what is going on? Because he doesn't know what a hollow is. So, we go to inside her mindscape. Zangetsu looks damaged and hurt. And the white Zonget uh white Ichigo is like, Yeah, you fucked up. You you severely fucked up. And she goes, I know. I didn't expect that dude to show up. And she goes, just let me take over. I'll kill him immediately. So you can protect Bakugo. So we can protect Bakugo like you wanted. So we can do whatever the hell you want. And Ichigo hears Bakugo and starts hearing yelling from outside. Yelling of, wake up, wake up. And she's like, yeah. Uh, I like fighting. I, I've accepted that, yeah. Um, but no. I'm not giving you control because you would also hurt Bakugo to protect people. Because Bakugo is still a little bit of a jerk. But she's my jerk. And she goes, yeah. Yeah, I know. So, what are you going to do? You going to seize control? Or let the horse take over? And she goes, I'm going to do both. And she goes, what? Why? And she says, yeah, I'm going to do both. Next time we fight, you get to also fight with me. And she goes, what? So, Ichigo shoots up, like, I'm awake, I'm awake. But she also slams her head into Bakugo, sending Bakugo flying. So, yeah, Bakugo is now out. Ichigo is awake. And in the right senses to be awake. And she walks over to Aizawa, who was currently watching the fight. Because he knows once she starts fighting, she can't be stopped unless it's by someone she loves or is stronger than her. 